Tardes, Filipinas. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao be ready because it's Adventure Time, Philippines. Viva! Celebrating a fiesta annually is one of the well-accustomed traditions and part of the Filipino culture. Fiesta is the time when we express our words of gratitude for all the blessings received and given to us from our Supreme Being, who is our God, the Almighty Father. These things became possible through the intercession of our Blessed Mother and our patrons, 
who became part of our Christian living since our childhood days, and a tradition which was passed from our ancestors from generation to generation. The third Sunday of January is the Feast of the Holy Child Jesus, Señor Santo Niño. Let's take a look and no further why the feast was formerly celebrated every April 28th through our first religious tourism for year 2022.
Have you ever wondered and asked why we Catholics do novenas in honor of our patron saints and the purpose of doing it? Here's why. The novena is a kind of intensified prayer, which is usually done for nine consecutive days. If we say the phrase, intensified prayer, this is the time when we offer prayers, either to obtain special graces, to implore special favors, or to make special intentions in a preparation for a major feast. Doing this kind of intensified prayer was recorded from the book of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament of the Holy Bible, where the Blessed Virgin Mary and our Lord's chosen apostles spent nine days in Jerusalem preparing for the feast of the descent of the Holy Spirit beginning from the ascension of Jesus until the Pentecost. Several references, especially historical books, say that the Pentecost was the founding anniversary of the Catholic Church, while the other ones say it's not. The word novena comes from a Spanish feminine ordinal number, which means ninth, and it comes from the Latin cardinal number novum, which means nine. There are several types of novenas. Novena for preparation of a major feast, novena for mourning, novena of petition, and novena for penance. While novenas are taking place either inside a Catholic church or a Catholic chapel, we also hear the word gozos. The Gozos is a popular poetic composition that are sung in honor of Jesus Christ, the Latria, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Hyperdulia, Saint Joseph, the Protodulia, or of the saints, Dulia. Gozos is a Spanish word for joy, and it comes from the Latin word godium, which also means joy. They are sung in the context of an important religious act, such as the Mass of a great feast, a procession, or the blessing of an image, etc. Its goal is to render thanksgiving for the blessings received, or as an entreaty, for a petition of protection against evil. Of a written or oral character, they trace their origin back to the Middle Ages, and are preserved in most cases in documents of great artistic value, which we are attempting to collect, testify, and show. In the Philippines, the gozos are almost exclusively sung within the context of a novena. Its structure is antiphonal, that is, it is usually sung in two parts, the verses by the leader of the novena, the refrain by the rest. In music, it is trophic, meaning all its verses is set to the same tune or melody. The copla is treated as the refrain of the gossos, but this can be misleading. The copla is typically composed of four lines. The last two lines of the copla is called the estribilio, and these are the ones that are normally repeated after each verse. If there are only two lines, then the entire copla is repeated after each verse. So 
The estrophas are the verses of the gosos. It can have a minimum of four lines, a standard number of six lines, and a maximum number of eight lines. If the estrofa has the standard six lines, the last two lines are called the letrilia, and these, together with the estribillo of the copla, are sung as the refrain. If there are only four lines, the intercopla is repeated after each verse. If there are eight lines, the repetition will then depend on the established tradition of the place. The gozos exist as the Dalit and Tagalog areas, and these are either recited or sung. In the Visayas, the tradition is quite robust.
The Sinulog was started as a celebratory ritual of the natives of Zubu, the former name of Cebu. It was believed that Malay migrants from Borneo, now in Brunei, Jerusalem, were the first to dance the Sinulog. The said ritual was changed when Spaniards arrived, led by Portuguese explorer Fernando Magallanes or Ferdinand Magellan. As stories foretold, Magellan had a mistake beyond his navigation on shores, which resulted to his accidental discovery of the Philippine soil. The said expedition arrived on Cebu on Sunday, April 7th, year 1521. Christianity was started when Magellan introduced the little image of the Holy Child Jesus, or the Señor Santo Niño, as a gift from Spain to Raja Humabon and Queen Juana, the chair of the native settlers of Cebu. Together with his constituents, Raho Mabon and his wife Humamay were the first baptized Filipino Catholics. When the two got baptized by Fray Pedro Valderrama on April 14, year 1521, Raho Mabon was named Carlos in honor of King Charles V, while Humamay was named Juana. The image of the Holy Child Jesus was a symbol of friendship and alliance between the tribe of Charles V of Spain. The said image became the natives' refuge. Since then, the natives came and knelt the image in their own manner. The word sinulug came from Cebuano adverb sulug, which was translated in English as like water current movement. That's why the dance steps were done in forward, backward manner. According to some narratives, the story behind the famous Signulug dance came from Raha Umabun's confidant named Baladhai. It was all started when Baladhai suffered from illness that made Raha Umabun deeply saddened. Raha Umabun mandated his tribe to carry Baladhai on a chapel where the Santo Niño, or the Holy Child Jesus, was located. Ephemerally, Baladhai was found by the natives in a very good condition while vigorously dancing. Baladhai was asked what made him suddenly awake. Then spontaneously, he pointed the image of the Santo Niño located above his heading, or Uluhan and Cebuano, that made him ostensibly awake. Baladhai himself frighteningly shouted and he didn't know why he danced like water current movement. Until today, the two steps forward and one step backward movement dance is still used by the devotees of the Santo Niño or the Holy Child Jesus as ritual and offering to the Holy Child. Hermeneutically, the words Señor and Santo Niño can be found in the Bible, if you read the Spanish Bible in since words as aforementioned were Spanish by nature and by etymology. Señor means King, Lord, Sir, and Master. In the other hand, Pit Senor is a shortened Cebuano phrase for Sangpit sa Senor. Sangpit means to ask, to call, and to plead.
Santo Niño means Holy Child. Viva means long live, mabuhay, or mabuhi. Example, Viva Cristo Rey is long live Christ the King. Trivia, 60% of our Filipino vocabulary came from Spanish origin, while the remaining 40% came from Austronesian origin, including the Bahasa Melayo. Our church and we Catholics do not believe in the Bible alone doctrine, but rather, we believe in the sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and sacred magisterium. John 20, 30, 31, John 21, 25, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 15, and 3, 6 clearly refutes Bible alone doctrine. At this point, let yours truly present you all the important dates related to the Santo Nino. Aside from the festivities in Cebu, there are also celebrations held in other parts of the country where the image of the Santo Niño is honored. The Santo Niño de Tondo in Manila is the second oldest holy child image in the country, followed by the Santo Niño de Arevalo in Iloilo City. According to the Facebook page named Seminarians Musings, there were only four images of Christ that are canonically crowned. First. The Bambino Jesu di Aracueli in Rome, Italy. Second, 
Jesu Bambino di Arenzano, still in Italy. Third, the Holy Infant Jesus of Prague in Czech Republic. And the last, here in the country, the Santo Niño de Cebu. The first celebration of Sinulog was took place in year 1980, where numerous group of students of Cebu performed the Sinulog dance during the Feast of the Santo Niño until it became widespread and recognized as the mother of all festivals in Cebu. The month of January is about to unfold, and if Filipinos, especially us Cebuanos, hear the word January, this is the first thing that will pop up in our minds. The Fiesta Senor, or also known in millennial term as hashtag Pretty Tip. In year 2020, before the COVID-19 pandemic took place, there were 300,000 people joined the Walk with Jesus, dawn of January 9. While there were estimated 300,000 people joined the Walk with Mary, dawn of January 17. And there were estimated 2.5 to 3 million people joined the Solemn and Vesperas procession, afternoon of January 18. Last 2021, all of its processions were cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, all of its Novena Masses, especially the opening day, the Fiesta Vesperas Mass, the Fiesta Masses, the Thanksgiving Masses, and the Hubo Masses were done online and via live streaming until up to this year 2022. In relation to this, our religious tourism blog, IAT Philippines, together with its sibling Facebook pages namely Apologetica, Catholic Faith Defense Philippines, Daily Catholic Facts and Exposé, Defenders of the Catholic Church, Kabataang Kay Cristo, Kikupa Youth Organization, Suba Masulog Youth Cluster, and the Devout Catholic Youth were able to join the Fiesta Senior Celebration for being a social media and cross-posting partners of Social Communications Department of the Basilica Minore del Santo Niño de Cebu. In behalf of the Facebook pages mentioned, yours truly and my social communications partner, Brother Denmar Santiago, would like to express our words of gratitude to the whole Basilica Minore del Santo Niño de Cebu for opening their doors to us to be their companions of spreading this letter and devotion in social media, especially within these challenging times brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, the aftermaths of Typhoon Adet and other catastrophes.
That would be all for our today's vlog. For more videos, please simply visit the official Facebook fan page of i80 Philippines and please subscribe our official YouTube channel and tap the bell button so that you can be notified with our latest posts and updates. This has been yours truly, VJ Pendleton Thompson. Yes, you heard it right and you see me right. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao be ready for our next adventure. Pits in your Philippines, pits in your world. Hello, Viva Pit Senior! <laughs> Hello!